everybody. Welcome back to Flammograph Present from By Design Visuals. I'm your host. My name is John Moline, and uh, this is our third in this series. Today, I don't want to spend quite as much time talking about Flammograph as I do about kind of the ins and outs of actual storytelling. You know, I, God blessed me with an incredible coach a number of years ago by the name of Dorothy Miller. And um, she's gone home to be with the Lord now. But one of the greatest spiritual mentors and coaches and life coaches for, for, for my ministry that I've ever had. I'll be forever grateful for what Dorothy Miller did in my life. And the, man, I don't know how many thousands around the world that she's impacted through her ministry. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that and her and the ministries that she has and what's available to you actually after our last video series. Some of the things that she taught me, I wanna share with you, and you can actually find a, a very, very full discussion of this story with some links that uh, we're gonna put with this video in, in the show notes so you'll be able to link to these. There are actually three different podcasts uh, put together by a friend of mine in a discussion that he and I had talking about the techniques that Dorothy Miller blessed our lives with and, and helping us to be pretty effective storytellers of God's word. So here's a few of those things. First of all, something that I call uh, kind, of, kind of pace, all right? Pacing. Most people, when they're dealing, telling a biblical story or even reading the scriptures, they go way too fast. Almost like it's a race. It doesn't make it memorable. We're not reading the paper. We're not reading a magazine. We're not even quoting something. We're trying to make a story part of God's revelation about himself. We're trying to tell that, that biblical story in such a way that those who hear us and those who see what we have will remember the details of the biblical story that was presented. So pacing is really, really important. To go slowly, slow down. Something else I wanna talk about, phrasing. As you're learning these stories, using the biblical scripts that we have, as you read that story for the first time, take the phrases and test them out. Decide for yourself. You can't emphasize every single word. That would not make it memorable. You have to make a decision on what words you want remembered. And so you're gonna emphasize those words. Put emphasis on those words, possibly names, locations, right? Descriptive words. Now the serpent was more cunning than any other animal of the field that the Lord God had made. And the serpent said to the woman, you see, slowing it down, pacing, phrases. Test out the different phrases to see how you want to say the different parts of the story. A number of other things that you're gonna to have to deal with. Um, different individuals in the story. The woman speaks, all right? The serpent speaks. Well, what do we know from this story, something that might affect our storytelling? Well, as we talked about in a previous video, we know that the serpent was cunning, sly, crafty, devious. Now, these are inanimate objects. We can't make them have expression but you can have expression on your face. You can use gestures. So the serpent said to the woman, did God say, thou shalt not eat from every tree in the garden? You see, interact with the story, make it memorable. You see, when you go back and you use these same gestures in your lead through, it will very quickly bring to mind the details of the story. 
we know the serpent was cunning. Later on in the story, you'll recall that after they ate the fruit from the tree, they visually changed and they realized that they were naked. Then, you remember what they heard? Yeah. They heard the voice or the sound of the Lord God walking through the garden in the cool part of the day, and the man and his wife did what? Remember, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And then God calls out to Adam and saying, Where are you? Now, you remember what, what the story says about Adam, how he was feeling. When God calls out to him and he responds, you don't just want to say, oh, you know, I heard your voice. I was afraid because I'd, you know, uh, eaten from the tree. I was naked, so I hid myself. No, no, no. That's not memorable. Put the phrases out there. Go slow. Emphasize what's important. But what do we know about Adam? We know he was afraid. You can put fear on your face. You can put fear in your voice. Uh, I, I, I heard your voice, but I was afraid, and, and, I, and I hid myself because, well, I'm naked. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And you remember how the story continues. Phrasing, pace, going slow, using the realities of the story. Is there anxiety? Is there fear? The serpent was cunning. Now let's talk about something that's really important. God actually speaks in this story. Dorothy and I had a lot of discussions about how to do the voice of God. We don't know what God's voice sounded like. So how do you deal with the voice of God? Let, let me recommend that you deal with the voice of God theologically. What do I mean by that? Well, what do we know about God? Now, there are some times in the story it's very obvious that God is angry, that Jesus was angry. Remember when he was angry with the Pharisees, some other religious leaders. If he was angry, it's all right to sound angry. But if you don't know the emotion of God in a particular story, keep your voice very, very neutral. Do you realize it's possible to say and tell a perfectly word-for-word, -word, even accurate story and give a misrepresentation and a misinterpretation of the character of God, either by your facial expressions that might show anger or irritation, you need to be aware of what your face looks like, or in the expression and the tone of your voice. If you don't know, keep your voice neutral. But if the story indicates it, go ahead and put that kind of emphasis in your voice. Make it realistic. We talked, Dorothy and I used to talk about what we called natural voice sounds. You see, if, if, someone is, if, if someone is grieving, it's fine to put that break in your voice. You don't want it to be over dramatic, sobbing or something of that nature. Why? Because that's something else you need to be aware of. You want the emphasis and the focus to be on the story, not the storyteller. You want them to remember the story accurately. They don't have to remember the storyteller. We're irrelevant. It's the story that needs to be memorable, not necessarily you and not necessarily me. Now, one last thing about making a memorable story. Many parts of our stories, there's a narrator. Who's the narrator? That's the person, maybe the biblical writer, but it's the person who's giving us information about the story, but he's not or she are not actually part of the story. Keep the voice of the narrator neutral, 
but don't make it boring. You also want them to remember this information. The beginning of this story is the voice of the narrator. Now the serpent, remember, now the serpent was more cunning than any animal of the field that the Lord God had made. And the serpent said to the woman. Now all of that is the narrator. Know what parts are narrator, then the serpent speaks. Remember, the serpent is cunning. You might want to make that sound a little sneaky. Cunning. Crafty. Do you realize that you can put incredible dynamics into a story without volume? Volume may have nothing to do with it. Sometimes there is volume in a story. Blind Bartimaeus is one of those stories. The Bible says that he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then you remember the crowd tried to make him be quiet. Be quiet. The story says he cried out even louder. If there are dynamics in the story, make the story come alive. Make it real. Don't just tell people a story. I like to recommend, and with flannel graph, it is so easy to do. Take them into the story. That's a few things on how to make a story memorable, some storytelling skills. And I've had the joy of doing this with quite a few different people, actually coaching them in storytelling skills, and you can take them from where they are, make them even better. I hope that you'll practice some of these things, talk about some of these things as a group, listen to what people say, and become a more skilled storyteller. Make the stories from God's Word, which are the most exciting stories in the world because they're actually true. Make them memorable, don't make them boring. Next time we get together, I'm gonna go through this entire story for you and show you and demonstrate to you how to actually tell this story, and I'm gonna try and incorporate all these different things that I've talked about when we do that. We'll do that next time we get together on Flannel Graph Presents. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.